I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to another Fearful Earful. And speaking of ears, the story we are about to direct to yours concerns a different part of the facial anatomy, the mouth. Only in this case, the mouth isn't there. Now, if that sounds incredible, listen carefully to the tale of Joe Gannett, who has the great misfortune of meeting up with men without mouths. If you think you're baffled by the mystery of how men can exist without mouths to breathe with, eat with, and speak with, then imagine the plight of poor Mr. Gannett himself. Kitty, Kitty, I saw another one today. I swear I did. A man without a mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe, you didn't. I'm telling you, I swear to my mother's grave. He walked into this bar, see? He sat down at the end. He looked straight at me, Kitty, so help me. And he didn't have a mouth. Our mystery drama, Men Without Mouths, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Joe Silver and Patricia Elliott. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Our story begins in the heart of New York City. A heart which, as usual, beats with the rhythm of rushing traffic, the clang of construction, the clamor of commerce, and the never-ending flow of people on their way to meetings, parties, rendezvous, and other human encounters. But we're interested in only one person today. There he is, just hailing a taxi on the corner of East 63rd Street. He's a dapper figure in his blue serge suit, his white shirt, and conservative gray tie. He appears to be a man in his late 50s, well-dressed, well-tanned, and well-heeled. His name is Joe Gannett. Occupation? Retired. But retired from what? Listen. The taxi! A taxi! Taxi! Uh, 530 Westside Avenue. Right. Nice day for a change, eh? Yeah, it's okay. One day hot, one day cold. It's enough to drive you crazy. Yeah. Hey, you know something? You look familiar. Yeah. I'm a movie star, Mac. I'm Raquel Welch. No, I mean it. You really do. Do you ever live in Chicago? Look, you mind we do without the conversation? I'm from Chicago originally. Moved here about 10, 11 years ago. I could swear I knew you from some... Wait a minute. You're Joey Ganatello. You got it wrong, mister. Listen, you wouldn't remember me, Mr. Ganatello, but I used to drive for Turk Wilson sometimes. You remember Turk Wilson? He's in stir now, of course. They got him on income tax evasion. I don't know, no Turk Wilson, and my name isn't whatever you said, you understand? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, uh, no offense, mister. Okay. No offense. And no more conversation. Just a minute. Oh, You're choking me. Couldn't believe my eyes when those things started to arrive this morning. You like your First the dishes, then the silver. Uncle Joe, that silver. It must have cost a fortune. Hey, hey, hey. do I have to stand out here in the hall? Huh? You got a new apartment. Oh. Let me to take a look at it. Huh? Of course. Come in. Hey. Only oh, don't look too hard, please. Hey. Everything's still in such a mess. Hey, it looks pretty good to me. Well, I still got to paint the bedroom, and the drapes aren't up yet, uh-huh. and I'm going to cover the whole wall over there with bookshelves. Yeah. Ira's going to build them for me. Oh. And don't you think it was a good idea to break through to the dining room? Makes the living room look twice as big. We'll put up some kind of divider between the two. Hey, hey, hey. Who's, who's this we? You got a roommate or something? No, of course not. Who's this Ira? A, a carpenter. 
No, a boyfriend. Oh, oh, you got yourself a steady, huh? Why do you think he's steady? Hey, listen, the guy who's going to build your bookshelves and dividers and all that Never stuff. Never mind about <laughs> that. Come on, let's see the kitchen. Hey, stop rushing me. Hey, how about give me a drink first? Oh, of course. I'm just so excited. Uh, you're not sorry now, huh? About accepting all this? Yeah. Oh, how could I be sorry? My own co-op apartment? I just wish you hadn't paid all that money, Uncle Charlie. Ah, come on. You know why I did it, Kitty. I did it for your old man. This is the kind of thing Matty Russo would have done if he was alive. No, Uncle Joe. That isn't true. My father could have never afforded anything like this. Well, if he hadn't been so dumb about life insurance... It... Ah, what's the use of worrying about that now, huh? He was my best pal, and you... Well, you're like a... You're like my daughter now. And if a guy can't help his daughter, then, oh, you know... Oh, if you keep talking like that, Uncle Joe, you're going to have a shoulder full of wet tears. Oh, come on, come on, huh? <laughs> Knock off that sentimental garbage. Next thing you'll be sitting in my lap. But what, what would I ever say about that, huh? <laughs> Uncle Joe? Yeah? I'd like you to meet Ira. Oh, 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 oh so I was right, huh? It's serious, huh? I do like him. I like him very much. Yeah, what does this Ira do? I mean, besides build bookshelves. He's a doctor. A doctor? Hey, nice going, kid. Your mama would have liked that. His full name is Ira Hamill. Mm -hmm. And I didn't just meet him. He was doing some postgraduate work at college. Hey. I've actually known him for almost eight months. I... Told him about you, Uncle Joe. Oh, sure, why not? I mean, I'm, I'm the only folks you got. I mean, I told him about your trouble. What are you talking about, huh? Now, what made you do a thing like that? I couldn't help it. It just came out. Ah. We were talking, and I told him about what happened to you that night. Nothing happened to me that night. It was just a mistake. You fainted. There wasn't any mistake about that. Fainted? What kind of a word is that? Old ladies faint. Me? I just conked out for a couple of minutes. Yes, but the reason... Never mind the reason. You still trying to tell me I'm nuts? I didn't see that guy in the elevator? No. I'm not saying that. Because I did see him. Understand? He was some kind of Freak, that's all. And maybe somebody who had a bad accident got himself sewn up. But a man without a mouth? It's so incredible. I mean, how can anyone live without a mouth? This guy was alive. I seen him. Yes, and he scared you so much. Did you cut that out? Hey, hey wait a minute. This, uh, this... This boyfriend, this doctor of yours, he's, he's not a shrink, is he? No. He's an internist. <laughs> Good. For a minute there, I thought she was trying to make a patient out of me. <laughs> Ira doesn't have any trouble getting patients. He does very well all by himself. Well, I guess I have to meet this terrific guy. Why don't I ask him what his intentions are? <laughs> That's exactly what my intention is. To have you two meet. Anytime you're free. Me? I'm always free, you know that. Look, look, why don't you bring him over tonight, huh? To my place. You really mean it? Of course. I'll call that catering joint. We'll order some, something fancy like that beef Wellington joint, huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll open a bottle of that $60 wine and press the pants off. No, <laughs> we don't have to impress on Well, either. sure, why not? Let him think you're an heiress or something. Oh, a, a princess, baby, huh? <laughs> oh, you make me feel like a princess, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Okay, send that up. Look, look, make, make it two bottles. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so long. Uh, where's that food? Smell that catering joint. I told him it's 7 o'clock. Ah, I guess that's them, huh? <gasps> oh, oh, my God. No, no, get away from me. Get out of here. Get out of here. Are you sure he's all right? Are you sure it's not his heart? No, his, uh, his heart's okay. Pulse is a little fast. It's just shock, Kitty. He'll be okay. He looks so 
terribly pale. Uh, he's, uh, he's coming out of it now. <sighs> hey. Hello. Hello, Mr. Gannett. I'm sorry to have to meet you like this. Yeah. I'm, uh, Ira Hamill. Uh, yeah. The doctor. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very dirty trick, Uncle Joe. Getting Ira to make a house call for pretending to invite us to dinner. Uh, uh you help me out. Yeah, you better, uh, take it easy, Mr. Uh, Gannett. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm okay. I just got... A little dizzy. <laughs> How long was I out? I don't know. We got here at 7.15. Rang and rang, but nobody answered. I got worried and called the super. Yeah, listen, uh, did, the, did the food get here? It's here. Oh, but never mind about that. What about the wine? I ordered some of that chateau stuff. What uh, happened exactly? Nothing. Uncle Joe, please. The last time you had a blackout... <laughs> Well, was it anything like the last time? You want the truth. It was exactly like the last time. A man without a mouth. And she told you that, too? Well, it was interesting. I even looked up a book I have, Anomalies and Curiosities of Medicine. There is a condition called uh, atresia of the mouth. I'm uh, afraid I don't know of any modern case. So what you're saying is there is no such thing? No, I didn't say that. For one thing, I... I don't really know the whole story, just what Kitty told me about uh, you seeing this man in the elevator. That's right. He was in the corner of the elevator, reading the newspaper. He didn't even look up when I got in the car. But then I turned around and I seen him, staring at me. So he had eyes, but no mouth. None that I could see. Just skin, covering everything from his nose... To his chin. It was only an optical illusion. I'm sure of it. Mr. Gannett, did you see that man again tonight? No. You mean it was something else this time? It was another one. A different man right at my front door. But there was something unusual about it. It was the same thing. He didn't have any mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe. Now look, maybe it's freaks. The freaks walk around it. Hey, hey, Martians, maybe. <laughs> what, what do you think, Doc? Would it be, would it be Martians? Well, why should they pick on you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've never done nothing to a Martian. Why pick on me, eh? Hey, come on. Let's forget this junk. Huh? Let's eat that food. How about it, Kitty? You want to warm it up for us? Huh? All right, Uncle Joe. <laughs> what the heck? We got mouths. Let's use them. <laughs> Is it all right to, uh, come in, Mr. Gannett? Is Kitty with you? No, no. In fact, uh, Kitty doesn't even know I'm here. Hmm? Yeah? Then why are you? I just thought you and I could have a private conversation, if that's all right. Well, let's, let's make it some other time. I was taking a little nap. I'm, I'm not feeling so hot. Well, maybe I can help. I am a doctor. It's nothing serious. I think maybe I just bumped my head when I took that fall the other night. You want me to have a look at it? I said No. If I wanted a doctor, I'd call one. Well, I'm not here as a doctor. I'm, I'm here as Kitty's fiancé. Fiancé? Hey. You mean you two are engaged? That's right. <laughs> well, okay. Swell. I'm, I'm glad for you. For both of you. I know Kitty means a lot to you, Mr. Gannett. Sure, she means a lot. Her old man was my best friend. She's a kind of a... a legacy. Yeah, she thinks a great deal of you, too. She, uh... Considers you her entire family. Look, look, you want my blessing. You got it. You just treat my girl right. That's all I ask. I didn't come for your blessing. I came to ask you a question. Yeah? About what? About you and the syndicate. What was that? I know something about you that even Kitty doesn't know, Mr. Gannett. I know what you used to do for a living. Well, 
Mr. Joe Gannett seems to be a man who is not merely haunted by strange men without mouths. He also seems to be haunted by his past. Is it possible that the cab driver was correct? That Joe Gannett and Joey Gannatello are one and the same person? And is there any connection between his past and his terrifying present? We'll find out when we return shortly to Act Two. Dr. Ira Hamill may be the most important man in the life of Kitty Russo. And Kitty Russo is the most important person in Joe Gannett's life. But right now, Uncle Joe has every reason for wanting Dr. Hamill to go away and leave him alone. But Ira is a persistent young man, as persistent as the memories which Joe Gannett has been determined to forget. Okay. What do you know about me, Doc? I know you were called before the Illinois Crime Commission back in the 50s. You weren't old enough to blow your nose in the 50s. That's right. I don't remember anything about it. But I've read magazines. And I've seen television documentaries. But this uh, man I saw yesterday, this psychiatrist friend of mine, he was just getting his medical degree during the hearings. He remembered you, too. Did you say psychiatrist? I thought it wouldn't hurt to have his opinion. About whether I was nuts, huh? Oh, he didn't give me any diagnosis. He said he wouldn't even try, not on the basis of such slim evidence. But when I mentioned your name, well, he wondered if uh, Joe Gannett might have once been Joe Gannettello. Was a pretty good guess, wasn't it? Why don't you go home and practice medicine, Doc? You say one word as going to Kitty. Now I'll really act like her papa and tell her her boyfriend stinks. And believe it or not, Mr. Gannett, I'm trying to help you. But here's how you can help me. Here, go through with this. This psychiatrist friend of mine, he did have an idea about these apparitions you've been seeing. The men without mouths sounded valid to me. He did, huh? If you want me to, uh, tell you what he said, shut the door. Okay. Tell me. He said there was no doubt that they were hallucinations. But the pattern was fairly clear, given your background. What's that got to do with it? What does it bring to your mind? The idea of a man without a mouth. Well, you tell me. All right. Someone who can't talk. Isn't that obvious? A man without a mouth is silenced. Mouthless men tell no tales, just like dead men. What are you trying to say, Buster? You calling me a murderer? I'm just reporting my conversation, Mr. Gannett. The psychiatrist said... Well, your past associations may have left you with strong guilt feelings related to, well, informers or would-be informers. That's, that's, uh, that's not an accusation, just an analysis. You're all through? Well, the only reason I'm telling you this is because it might help. The only reason I want to help you is because of Kitty. I, well, I'd jump off the George Washington Bridge if Kitty said jump, Ira. Okay. Okay, you jump off bridges if you want to. You do anything you please, Doc, except for one thing. You don't say one word about this to Kitty. She really doesn't know, does she? One word, and I'll write her diploma around your neck, you hear me? I wasn't going to tell her, Mr. Gannett. I don't want to see Kitty hurt. I love her. Just as you do. Now you can open that door again. Do you want another drink, Mr. Gannett? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right, Harry. Another drink, that's right. Here you go. Yeah, right up to the top, Harry. Right up to the brim, huh? Sure, Mr. Gannett. You know, we always take good care of you. Nobody has to take care of me. I take care of myself, Harry. I always have. Sure, that's the way. Look out for number one, right? Hey, Harry. 
You know something? You know, you got a good, strong mouth. Thanks, Mr. Gannon. A guy can see your mouth, plain as day. And I was thinking of growing a mustache. You figure that wouldn't be a good idea? Hey, Harry, people have to have mouths, don't they? Uh, yeah, they sure do. Listen, some of the people come in here, they got real big mouths. Never stop talking for a minute. You never saw anybody without a mouth, Harry, did you? Uh, no, Mr. Gannett. I can't say that I did. Well, excuse me, I got a new customer. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? <coughs> oh, God! Oh, no! No! It's another one! It's another one! Hey, what's the matter? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out. Hey, Mr. Gannett. Let me what's out. The matter? Let me out. I swear I did. A man without a mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe, you did. I'll tell you, I swear, at my mother's grave. He walked into this bar. He sat down to the end. He looked straight at me, kid. He's so healthy. And he didn't have a mouth. Oh, Uncle Joe, you need help. You've got to have help. I thought maybe that friend of yours, a doctor, I thought maybe, maybe I should see him. Huh? Oh, you would, Uncle Joe. He could recommend. Yeah, yeah, I'll see him, Kitty. Kitty, I gotta do something. Please. Sit down, Mr. Gannon. Thanks. You've, uh, seen another one, haven't you? Now listen to me, Doc. I, I know you think I'm nuts. I ought to be seen a psychiatrist. Now a guy like you... I'll be happy uh, to give you the name of someone. No, 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 wait, now listen to me. I couldn't take that. I, I mean, go to a shrink. I, I'm just not the type. But, but you, you got a, you got a good head on your shoulders. I, I can tell. I'm not a psychiatrist. But you can help me. I know you can. I got ghosts haunt me, just like you said. I never believed in ghosts before, but maybe I've got to believe now. I'm not a spiritualist either. Look, I figured two ways. I could go to a doctor. Or I could go to church and talk to a priest. And both might help. That's. One thing psychiatrists and the church have in common, they know that confession is good for the soul. What do you mean, confession? It's the uh, root of the problem, isn't it? Guilt feelings build up pressure in the mind. Sometimes the pressure becomes unbearable and, well, there's some kind of explosion. What do you mean, in the brain? You might have been right when you used the word ghosts. The ghosts of the past may be haunting you, Mr. Gary. The past, the past, always the past. Why do you have to keep bringing that up? Isn't that the whole point? No. Where do these ghosts come from? From hell, that's from where. You mean they're ghosts of dead people? I knew I shouldn't have come here. I knew it would be a waste of time. Now, wait a minute, So Mr. long, Janet. doctor. You were right. You're no shrink. Maybe you're not any kind of doctor. Wait. Kitty and I are having a, a party in a couple of weeks. An engagement party. Have a good time. No, no, no. We want you to come. It's important to Kitty that you be there. I don't like parties. So long. I never should have gone there in the first place. A stupid kid. A stupid kid like that. It's... Hey, watch where you're going, Mr. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hello? Uncle Joe? Yeah, hi, Jimmy. Are you okay? Yeah, fine. Great. Why shouldn't I be? I just want to know. I suppose your boyfriend told you about me seeing him today. Uncle Joe, is it true that you don't want to come to our engagement party? Ah, uh, you know me, Kitty. I'm not... I'm just not the party type. You have to be here. All of Ira's relatives are going to be here. And there won't be anyone at all from my side. 
honey, I just can't make it. I... Kitty, I got a million things I got to get this place of mine in some kind of shape. I mean, it's got all kinds of junk laying around. I, I... Okay. Okay, honey, I'll, I'll try to be there. It's next Friday, 8.30, right here. I'll try, honey, I will. So long. <laughs> uh, as, long as, as long as I don't go nuts before then. Yeah, maybe I should clean up the junk around here. Look in that closet. Oh, look at all that junk. This Christmas stuff I ain't even open. Ah, this old typewriter, I should give that away, get rid of it. What am I going to do, write a book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a thing, all right. <laughs> Confession's good for the soul. I ought to put down a whole story like the doc said. Maybe he's right about it. Ah, I couldn't even write a postcard. Hey, hey now, how about this? Hey, the tape recorder one kitty gave me last year. She said I never even touched a thing. Hmm. See, how does this thing work anyway? Yeah, on, off, record, stop. Rewind, play. What? It's nothing very hard about that. Let's see. Where's the microphone here? Oh, yeah, it is. It plugs in here, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that works right. Now what? Uh, press the record button, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, testing one, two, three. Uh, testing one, two, three. Okay. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, press the rewind button now. Yeah, then press play. Testing one, two, three. Uh, testing one, two, three. That's easy enough. Only, how easy is it going to be to confess? Well, only one way to find out. Try. My name is Joe Gannett. No, that's not starting off with the truth, is it? My name is Joey Gannatello. In 1945, it, no, 46, I shot and killed a man named Ricky Natans. What the heck am I doing? Am I crazy? I can't put that on tape. That's crazy. I can't. Wait. Maybe, maybe that's the way. If they're really ghosts, then maybe that's what they want. A confession. <sighs> what now? Nobody will hear it. I'll tell everything, but I'll, I'll take the tape and stick it in an envelope. I'll leave it at my desk and write to be opened only after my death. Maybe, maybe that'll make them leave me alone. My name is Joe Gannett. I used to be called Joey Gannettello. I was born and raised in Chicago. I worked for a man named Turk Wilson. In 1946, I shot and killed a man named Ricky Natans. Turk Wilson paid me $200 to kill him on account of Natans talking to the feds about a black market operation. Six months after that, I shot and killed a man named Wally Sanchez. I don't know why Turk Wilson wanted him dead. A tape recorder is a wonderful device, a very useful tool in all sorts of situations. And if confession is good for the soul, you might even call it a confessional box. But will it be the right answer for Joe Gannett? Will it provide him with the magic formula to rid him of all his mouthless phantoms? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Three. Now 
two weeks later. The day, Friday. The occasion, the engagement party of Kitty Russo and Dr. Ira Hamill. As you can hear, it's a very happy occasion. But for Kitty Russo, it becomes even happier when the doorbell rings again and she opens it for a very important guest. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Hey, Kitty, well, here I am, just like I promised. Oh, Uncle Joe, <laughs> I almost gave up hope. Well, what for? Didn't I say I'd be here? You never said it very convincing. Uh, hello, <laughs> Mr. Ganny. Uh, Glad you made it after all. Hiya, Doc. Hey, you think I'd miss my little girl's one and only engagement party? Huh? Well, I'm glad you didn't. I think Kitty would have been very disappointed. Oh, listen, no engagement is official without me, right, Kitty? That's right, Uncle Joe. Oh, you look just marvelous. Ira, doesn't he look well? Oh, yeah, you look fine, Mr. Gannett. Been feeling okay? Me? I feel like a million bucks. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear you say that. And then you haven't had any more, um... Trouble. Would you like passing out? No, no, no more of that. No, I didn't mean just that. It's all over, Doc. The whole problem. It's all over and done with. Then you're not seeing anything peculiar these no, days. No, no. I figured out what the whole trouble was. Yeah. I changed my brand of booze. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Joe, come on. <laughs> That's what it was. I changed my booze. I changed my reading glasses. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Speaking of booze, how do you get a drink in this joint? Oh, you come on with me, oh. Show you where the best booze is. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Say, is it uh, really true? Have the hallucinations stopped? Stop cold, just like that. Oh, I'm really glad to hear that. So am I. For a while back there, I thought I'd have to take a trip to the funny farm, yeah. you know? <laughs> but it hasn't happened once in the last two weeks. Well, that, that certainly gives us something to drink to, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll drink the kitty, Doc. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you like uh, scotch, right? Yeah, scotch is fine. Um, listen, Ira, I, uh, I said a couple of things to you that weren't so nice. I, uh, I hope you can forget. Well, I didn't take any offense. That's good. I thought, you know, you marrying Kitty, that means you'll be, you'll be stuck with me, too, huh? <laughs> Joe, why do you think it happened? What? Losing your ghost. Oh, I don't know. I guess it just got tired of haunting me. Huh? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, now, listen, I mean, I... <laughs> I got a little present for you oh. and Kitty. No, nothing fancy, just something small and green. <laughs> Here. Thanks, Joe. Okay, go on, open it up, take a look. Well, all right. That's a lot of money, Joe. Well, a couple of kids get married today. They need every penny they can get their hooks on. Oh, I, I still think it's too much. Now, look, look, you got a nice long future ahead of you. Me, most of what I got is past, you know? Well, I know something else, too. The past is the past, Joe. Once it's gone, it's gone. Understand? Hey, Ira, you know something? I think... I think Kitty got herself a pretty good catch. <laughs> Come on now, honey. You don't have to do this. I can get my own taxi. <laughs> it's all right, Uncle uh, Joe. <laughs> I just want to make sure you get home all right. Oh, yeah. I know what you think. You think your Uncle Joe is drunk, <laughs> huh? That's what you think. You just had a very good time. That's well, it. I had a very good reason that my little girl is getting herself engaged. Hey. Now, look at that, huh? You see that? See what? That lady, there's some nerve, huh? Hey, lady! Lady! We were here first. Oh, don't worry about it, Uncle Joe. There'll be more than one cat. Yeah, people shouldn't do that. It's not nice to do that. Hey, lady! You're trying to steal our cab? Oh, excuse me, honey, Uncle. Uncle Joe? Now, listen, lady, you can't do... Who? <gasps> Again? Who no move? Uncle Joe! No! Come back! No more! Please! No more! Uncle Joe! Well, you're a lucky man, Joe. You must have good, strong bones because you didn't break one of them. I'm, I'm okay. A car just knocked the wind out of me. Look, uh, I'll pull some strings where you get me out of this place. Well, they just want you for observation, Joe, just for a couple of days. I'll run home and, and get you a toothbrush and anything else you might need. Uh, and your uh, hospitalization card. Don't forget that. Yeah, yeah that's right. 
There's no no use to add an insult to injury. Now you're being sensible. Okay. Where's my clothes? Everything's right here in the closet, but don't get any ideas. No, no, I'm thinking about my house keys. They're in, in one of the pockets. Don't worry about the keys. I've got my old set with me. Okay. Well, uh, why don't you go now, then, huh? All right. I'll be back in an hour or so. I, uh, listen, I, I want to talk to you alone. All right, about what? You was wrong. What do you mean? Your whole theory was all wet. The skies without mouths. I mean, you thought I was being haunted by a lot of, a lot of ghosts from the past, but you were wrong. Why do you say that? Because I saw another one tonight, and it wasn't a man. It was a woman. What? You heard me. I saw a woman without a mouth, and there ain't a woman in my whole life I ever. I ever felt guilty about you, Mr. Ann? That sent your whole idea up the flu. Look, Joe, I told you I wasn't a psychiatrist. Now, maybe my diagnosis was wrong, or maybe it was incomplete. It was or... wrong. There ain't no reason for me to see a woman without a mouth. I never heard a woman in my life, never. All right, all right. So I was mistaken. I'm sorry. I, I did it all for nothing. I put the whole thing on tape off. Uh, what were you going to say? The tape. The tape in my library. What are you talking about, Joe? My my hospitalization card, all that stuff. I, I keep it in the library. In the top drawer of my desk. Well, don't worry. I'm sure Kitty will know where to look. Yeah. Yeah, she'll know, all right. She'll know exactly. Uh, hey, listen, Ira. Uh, do me a favor, will you? I'm kind of, kind of sleepy. Maybe if I took a little nap. Well, sure, Joe. I'll let you sleep. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Yeah. Fine. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get home. Maybe she didn't find it. Maybe she didn't even look at that envelope. Kitty, you here? Kitty? Library door's closed. $200 to kill him on account of Nathan oh. talking to the feds about a black market operation. Six months after that, I shot and killed a man named Wally Sanchez. Oh, my God. I don't know why Turk Wilson wanted him dead, but I shot him. I got $500 for that job. I was moving up in the world. The next man I hit was Vic Santioni. And I had to take care of his brother Tommy when he went gunning for Wilson. I never got picked up or even booked for these killings. I was a very lucky man. Kitty. Kitty. What do you think you're doing? Can't you see what I'm doing, Uncle Joe? I'm playing your tape. The one you had in the envelope. Who told you to do that? Didn't you see what it said? Yes. I saw what it said. It said, not to be opened until your death. But did you think I could resist something like that? You know me, Uncle Joe. Kitty, give me that tape. You know that's why Pop called me Kitty in the first place. Not because my name was Catherine. My name's Mary. But he always said... I was as nosy as a kitten, as curious as a cat. Honey, please. Please, you shouldn't have listened to that stuff. It's got nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me anymore either now. That was the second time, Uncle Joe. What, what did you say? It's the second time I've played the tape. I heard it all the way through the first time, but I didn't believe what I was hearing. Uh -oh. I couldn't. Why? Why did you have to do that? Papa. My poor Papa. Kitty, Kitty, listen to me. You don't know about these things. You don't know how a man gets pushed and shoved in this world until he's got to be like an animal. That's the only reason, Kitty. Try, try to understand. Kitty, no, don't. Don't play it. Don't. Listen to yourself, Uncle Joe. Hillary, listen. Kitty. Tulsa, California. 
was a junk dealer. Narcotics, not scrap iron. That was, let's see, uh, 1965, or February. Yeah, I remember February because it was cold, freezing in New York. I was glad to get a job out <laughs> with. Did he stop him with a lot of guns? Stop it! Uh, white call, same year, same state. I think it was uh, November. It was almost the last one except for... Except for Marty Rousseau. <sighs> Marty had this daughter in college. He called her Kitty. He was worried about her finding out what he was doing. He never stopped worrying about that. Only then they needed a fall guy for a payroll job and they picked Marty and he refused. He said he wouldn't take a rap. He wouldn't go to jail and shame his daughter. He said he'd spill for him. Are you listening, Uncle Joe? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Why you took such good care of me, Uncle Joe? Is that why? I had to do what they said. I had to do it. Kitty, it would have been the same with your papa if he was told to hit me. There's a gun in your desk, Uncle Joe. Is this the gun you killed him with? No, put that down, Kitty. That thing is loaded. Tell me how you killed my father. No. Your best friend. Why don't you tell me how? No, please put it down. Did he know it was you, Uncle Joe? Kitty. Did you look him in the eyes when you shot him? Kitty. The way I'm looking at you. Kitty. Oh, what kind of place is this? It sounds like. The whole room is breathing. <laughs> I can't hear it breathing. Is that me? Do I hear myself? Oh, that light. I never saw a light that big. But it's, it's not the summer. I can't open my eyes. It's too bright. must be wearing off. This pulse is still dropping fast, Doctor. Keep that respirator going. It's no use. We're losing him. Past tense, nurse. We've lost him. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. But I'm not sorry to get this mask off. Oh, yes. Me too. It always makes me feel as if I have no mouth at all. It seems that Joe Gannett was seeing ghosts, all right. But in this case, they weren't the ghosts of the past. They were the ghosts of the future. Men without mouths, clustered around an operating table, not trying to destroy his life, but attempting to save it. I'll be back shortly. not worried about men and women without mouths at the Radio Mystery Theater, as long as they have ears. And since you seem to have a pair of ears in good working order, we hope you'll turn them to our wavelength again. It's our purpose in life to show you 
that sometimes it's fun to be afraid. Our cast included Joe Silver, Patricia Elliott, Ira Lewis, and Dan Ako. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Hey, that's wonderful. That's just like a magician I saw once. It's, it's not magic, Effie. It's a natural power. I read somewhere that most of us use only a small portion of our brain potential, but with less than 5%. You, you mean that anyone can do what, what you just did? Sure, most people can. I'm sure of it. Oh, hey, Joe, will you teach me? Will you show me how you did that? If you want to, I can show you that and much more. Like what? Well, like hear what I have in my mind without my saying a word. Oh, hey, that'd be neat. We could talk and nobody would hear us. I could show you how to move objects from across the room. We could clean up from here. I could even teach you how to fly. Yeah, like Peter Pan. Hey, look, I'm flying. Hey, you mustn't joke about it, Effie. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, Joseph. Listen, I wasn't making fun of you. I, I was just happy. Never make fun of me, Effie. You're frightening me. It's all over now. Let's, let's finish the dishes. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. K-O-I-N, Music Radio, 97. It's 12 o'clock.